Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Automate Desktop Management and Streamline Access. My name is Andrew Kloman of AWS. I'll be one of your speakers and moderators for today's webinar. Let's go ahead and kick things off. So this webinar is a part of an ongoing webinar series. Uh, this is the seventh webinar of this series. Um, if you want to take a look at uh, some of these past webinars, uh, these will be included in a, uh, a thank you uh, email at the end of the webinar today. Uh, so go ahead and check those out. Um, and stay tuned for dates and times for future webinars that uh, will be included a part of the series. So again, I'm Andrew Kloman, um, a Partner Solutions Architect here at AWS. I'm also the Global Technology Lead for End User Computing Partners. Been in the space for about 15 years um, at AWS for a little bit over two and a half years. And uh, earlier this year, got my Solutions Architect Professional Certification, which I'm uh, pretty proud of. It's a pretty hard start to get. So if uh, you guys are looking at going to do some AWS certifications, check out the Solutions Architect Associates and then uh, look into the professional one. I'm also joined by uh, Angela G. Do you want to introduce yourself? Thank you, Andrew. My name is Angela G. I'm a senior product line manager in the end user computing business unit here at VMware. Um, one of my main responsibilities is our Horizon 7 on VMware Cloud on AWS solution. Um, I've been at VMware for four years, but I've had um, about 11 years of experience as a PM in the EUC space. Awesome. Thanks, Angela. So looking at the agenda, uh, we're going to do a little bit of an introduction, uh, introduction to VMware Cloud on AWS. Uh, talk about migrating virtual desktop infrastructure to uh, VMware Cloud on AWS, uh, include some of the ben benefits and common use cases, um, benefits of being able to access the AWS native services uh, with these solutions, and some uh, information about deploying, uh, particularly Horizon 7 on VMware Cloud on AWS, and then a wrap up. So let's dive into it. So um, VMware Cloud on AWS uh, helps customers move to AWS with less application and infrastructure rework. Um, so speaking with customers, this application and infrastructure rework is a significant cost, time, um, and a lot of effort uh, into, uh, into having these solutions work for customers or make that transition, right? So with, uh, with, it, uh, with VMware Cloud on AWS, the solution provides a, an easy way uh, to, to kind of mitigate some of those those uh, those those costs and uh, time, uh, VMware Cloud on AWS, uh, you know, from a uh, a lift and shift kind of perspective, that's a lot of the benefits that you'll see in this, um, uh, where you're able to use a lot of the same uh, features and benefits of on-premises VMware Cloud on AWS. I'm sorry, on-premises VMware, uh, <laughs> as well as uh, moving that onto VMware Cloud on AWS. Um, so from a, a lift and shift or replatforming, um, basically that is moving over uh, the existing kind of infrastructure and a very, very quick uh, to time and, and minimal cost to do that. Uh, application and infrastructure rework, um, that's going through and actually redoing an application. So maybe you're switching to a microservices platform. Uh, or maybe you're completely redoing an application or, or switching from uh, one CRM to another one. Um, that, that's what we're talking about here. So again, VMware Cloud on AWS uh, really helps with the cost and time uh, to do one of the, these kind of migrations to AWS. Um, from, from understanding that, uh, you know, customers do uh, see the benefits of a hybrid uh, approach um, to their IT infrastructure. With uh, on-premises infrastructure, you know, uh, having the familiar use of process and tools uh, leveraging existing infrastructure uh, investments. Um, they may have unique hardware config configurations, uh, granular, granular control over the apps and data. Um, where traditionally with public cloud, um, you know, some of the benefits there are being able to scale, reduce costs, or the global footprint that we provide, and the, uh, uh, the pay-as-you-go uh, model with, uh, with AWS. So taking both of these benefits and combining them uh, to have this jointly uh, engineered solution. So it's best of both worlds without having to buy hardware, refactoring or refactoring or replatforming uh, software, um, again, leveraging the existing tool sets, skill sets um, that uh, customers may have already, already had in the past. So what does a, what does a solution look like? Um, so VMware Cloud on AWS is a jointly engineered solution. Um, so there's uh, components of this where VMware and Citrix, uh, VMware and uh, AWS have uh, built this solution together. 
Uh, it is uh, sold, operated, supported by VMware and also now AWS and our partners. Um, so uh, there's a, a lot of uh, cooperation going on with, uh, with this solution. Um, from a more of a technical perspective, uh, how this works is with the AWS global infrastructure, we're able to provide that to VMware. VMware uh, provides the uh, moving up the stack there, the vCenter, uh, vSphere, vSAN, NSX, uh, and then provides out the vCenter console to the end user, uh, to the end customer. Um, so again, making use of AWS's uh, global infrastructure, uh, the best of uh, AWS as well as the best of VMware, um, being able to then have the AWS native services, which we'll go into a little bit further, to complement those solutions. So what we're seeing with uh, VMware Cloud on AWS is that customers are able to um, add additional hosts within about 10 minutes. Um, this is a huge benefit compared to what customers see on-premises. Uh, on-premises environments, um, we're, we typically see from customers about uh, 86 days to get an additional host set up with inside of their uh, SDDC or uh, their uh, ESX environment there. So with the flexibility here, um, you know, we're able to have scenarios where maybe you have a quick POC or a application development team that needs quick access to resources. Um, we're able to do that very quickly uh, opposed to uh, the operational components that would be required to say purchase and add in and maybe restack, um, wire up, all those kind of things to get a new host uh, up and running on premises. One of the other benefits uh, with having the solution on AWS is our uh, global footprint. So with the 18 regions available today, uh, San pa uh, Paulo and Seoul being some of our newest regions, uh, with more to come, um, uh, customers are able to uh, be able to have this hybrid uh, solution, but also have uh, low latency and potentially high bandwidth connections uh, between their on-premises environments and AWS. So again, this is uh, the current footprint and we're expanding this uh, more and more. Uh, there's a roadmap uh, sites that you have access to um, on VMware's website as well to see any of the new updates from that. So global availability here. So with all that, um, we're also seeing customers um, move to AWS in kind of a couple different categories. So the uh, different kind of use cases that these customers are doing uh, align with these kind of primary uh, primary needs from a, from, a, from a customer's perspective. So uh, starting from the left there, the data center expand, uh, extension. Um, this is great for, you know, as this conversation with uh, this webinar, with virtual desktops and published applications. Uh, particularly around being able to uh, extend out your data center uh, so you don't have to build on premises for peak. Um, you know, and this, this may be something where businesses may expand out um, at certain months of the year, um, maybe certain times during the week, uh, maybe certain times during the day. Um, any one of those, you're able to expand out the VMware Cloud on AWS solution as you need that. So maybe uh, there's seasonal work, maybe there's contingent workforces, maybe you've acquired a new company, um, and those kind of use cases, <clears throat> you need to get resources very quickly and run them for maybe a couple months uh, out of the year. Um, maybe there's a situation where um, you have a workload like virtual desktops where you're really only kind of using them for maybe nine to five Monday through Friday. You can spin up the resources on VMware Cloud on AWS and then uh, spin those back down when you're not using them. So instead of paying for the entire month for a host, you're paying for only what you need and paying, for, uh, paying on the go for those resources. So again, virtual desktops is a key use case there. Uh, test dev is another one that we see from our customers. Disaster recovery is another big one. Um, being able to have the same exact tool set and the same exact, say, uh, images, maybe even desktop images, and moving those from on-premises into VMware Cloud on AWS is a very seamless transition. So to keep, say, RTO, RPO numbers um, uh, adequate for the business, uh, this uh, kind of solution is a really, really elegant way of uh, being able to provide a disaster recovery solution. Um, either that being a new DR, uh, existing DR, or um, maybe complementing another one. 
<clears throat> application migrations is another big use case. So um, with, with applications, you know, let's talk about, say, a three-tier application set. Um, and with, uh, you know, the database and application tier, maybe there's a move to AWS. Um, maybe there's an overall migration plan for moving uh, a lot of your applications, but let's talk about this one three-tier here. And, you know, it has a desktop component to it. Um, typically with desktop applications, being able to communicate directly to a database or an application tier requires low latency, where the application simply won't function or it'll perform very poorly. So it makes sense to move the desktop tier to AWS along with the backend components of that application. And, um, you know, this solution is, is really key for being able to do that a lot because uh, being able to use the same desktop image um, as well as, you know, from an end user's perspective, um, they may not even know this, the difference between where uh, their application is coming from, if it's on-premises or within VMware Cloud or native OS. So that's, a, that's another key, um, very nice solution there. <clears throat> uh, it kind of goes along the same with uh, application monitorization. That same kind of story that I just told with a three-tier application, maybe that back end of that application is being completely rewritten, and maybe that's going to um, maybe a microservices-based application. Uh, maybe you're using Kubernetes and um, some of the cool uh, containerization uh, software for uh, that application, completely modernizing that application. You still have a desktop component to that. You're still going to need to get access to that, and that's the same kind of benefits there. So we're seeing these kind of use cases within uh, this uh, with VDI on VMware Cloud on AWS. Along with that, um, we're seeing uh, customers make use of AWS native services. So you may be familiar with AWS Direct Connect, being able to connect your AWS region into your on-premises environment, um, doing that with high bandwidth and low latency. Um, we also have other networking components that are very uh, common to be used in these kind of scenarios, such as the Elastic Load Balancer. Uh, we're able to make use of our load balancer as a service uh, instead of uh, potentially uh, one that you had self-managed before in the past. Particularly with the VDI use cases, Amazon FSx is another really good uh, AWS native service to combine with uh, VDI. Uh, it provides out a native Microsoft uh, uh, Windows file share, and uh, you're able to connect that with our own uh, AWS directory service, as well as your own directory service that you may self-manage. But essentially, if you have a situation where you have a Windows SMB share, you know, network drive, that network drive can exist on uh, Amazon FSx, and you may not have to manage then a, uh, a file system that, uh, to support that on AWS yourself. Um, so what's included with that too is uh, you know, backups, uh, monitoring, uh, a lot of the management to go in to support a system like that. Um, with uh, Horizon, as well as a handful of other VDI solutions, uh, there's a database that's usually required. So, um, you know, kind of a configuration database. So even something uh, like that can be uh, uh, provided by, the database can be provided by Amazon RDS. Um, say in this case, it would be something like a, a Microsoft uh, SQL uh, database. We have a whole variety of different database types available for that. But again, it's, it's a managed service around a database technology. So backups, recovery, um, uh, updates, monitoring, patching, all that kind of components to that uh, would be provided within that service. So here's a, a, you know, a handful of the AWS native services that you may see as you deploy VDI within VMware Cloud on AWS. So again, um, talking about some of the benefits here, um, running directly on bare metal hosts uh, is, is definitely a, a big piece to this. Um, so very, very similar to what's happening on premises, uh, simplified management and being able to provide the, uh, the infrastructure very easily. Um, no purchase for new hardware. You're, you're, you're paying for what you use there. Uh, again, we talked about the lift and reshape or uh, lift and shift kind of uh, migration patterns there. Uh, same tools, uh, seamless user experience from on-premises is another big one there. Okay, so those are the benefits of uh, uh, VMware Cloud on AWS and uh, in, in relation to, to uh, VDI use cases. Uh, we're now going to dive into more of the VMware Horizon uh, conversation, and I'm going to hand it off to uh, Angela. 
Thank you, Andrew. Um, so hopefully everyone on this call uh, knows a little bit about Horizon 7, um, but if not, so let me just briefly introduce it. Um, Horizon 7 is VMware's um, BDI software. Right? We support virtualized desktops and applications on the software, and it is traditionally used um, for on-prem. Uh, of course, today we're going to be talking about how to use it on VMware Cloud on AWS. And Horizon 7 is widely used. Um, we have about 11 million desktops under management uh, to date. So when we say Horizon 7 on VMware Cloud and AWS, what it essentially means is that we've taken um, our Horizon 7 product and qualified it on VMware Cloud, Cloud on AWS and you know, thought through the workloads and you know, published a reference architecture on how to deploy. But it's really the same product that's running both on-prem as well as on VMware Cloud on AWS that actually has a lot of benefits. So you deploy VM Horizon 7 on VMware Cloud and AWS, and then you have the option, as Andrew had mentioned, to connect to um, pretty much all of the AWS services. And what's good um, to know is that we've actually qualified all those AWS services that Andrew had just mentioned in a previous slide. Um, then you have the option to either um, connect your Horizon 7 pod on VMware Cloud and AWS to um, your on-prem Horizon 7 deployment. Right? And so that allows you to build a very easy hybrid cloud, uh, VDI cloud. Alternatively, you can have multiple pods of Horizon 7, uh, either in the same data center uh, on AWS or in multiple data centers, multiple AZs, um, and then you connect them together to build out a scale out and scale up uh, uh, infrastructure as well. So it's actually very, very flexible. So now I want to explore, uh, I would say, four key benefits of um, why customers are excited about deploying Horizon 7 on VMC. Now, the first one is around operational simplicity, right? I mean, that's really, you know, um, uh, kind of part and parcel of being a cloud deployment. Um, in, the, in the case of Horizon 7 on VMware Cloud and AWS, VMware is managing the vSphere infrastructure. And um, uh, you as a customer would manage your Horizon infrastructure, uh, which is the same as you know, what you would do before, either on-prem uh, uh, or what you've done before you kind of moved your deployment uh, from on-prem to Horizon uh, to uh, VMware Cloud and AWS, so your your um, workflows don't really change. Um, it's a really easy um, lift and shift, or as um, uh, Andrew would call it, lift and reshape. And so there's really no trans no major transformation that needs to be done um, because it is the same product and it's the exact same release even for Horizon 7, whether you deploy Horizon 7 on-premise or on VMware Cloud and AWS. Um, now. Um, there's a lot of benefit to maintain the same UI, the same workflows, uh, the same operational practices that your um, desktop admin uh, were, uh, is previously doing or is doing on-prem. Um, and then given that it's the same product, um, the list of the features that are supported on VMware Cloud and AWS is actually very, very similar. Right? What we've done is taken an approach of a blacklist rather than a whitelist. Instead of telling customers which Horizon 7 features are supported on VMware Cloud and AWS, we actually tell you which features are not supported. And that's actually a very small list. Um, it is in one of our KBs uh, is where you can actually find um, that small list of um, features that are not supported. Those features are either legacy features that we're going to be deprecating anyway. So, it, you know, there's no point kind of supporting it on, on a new product, on a new platform like VMware Cloud and AWS, or they're features that simply aren't um, applicable to a cloud deployment. Now, continuing with the theme of operational simplicity, um, another really great thing is that you can use the same desktop and application images, and then you can um, replicate it from on-prem to VMC, right? So if you have an on-prem deployment, whether you're moving that entire on-prem deployment over to uh, VMware Cloud and AWS, and just shutting down your on-prem data center, or if you decide to do a hybrid cloud and keep both on-prem and uh, VMware Cloud and AWS, you can actually use the exact same desktop image, exact same application image, and just get it over from one to one site to another. Um, and, and to make that even easier, you could do that today, but to make it even easier is an image management service um, that we're going to be rolling out in the second part of this year. And then the other great thing is that you can use the same configurations that you use on-prem, right? Because Horizon 7, um, whether it's the connection server component, whether it's the app volume component, all of those different components, because they run both on Horizon 7 and on VMware Cloud and AWS, you can actually set them the same way using the exact same configuration. And so overall, you know, all of these things really just allow you to simplify management. Um, whether you decide to deploy Horizon 7 on VMC as a pure cloud deployment, um, meaning no on-prem component, or a hybrid deployment, right? Now, one thing that I will um, want to stress is that um, this is not a DAS solution or desktop as a service. 
Um, a desktop as a service solution is a fully managed solution. Um, in this case, um, Horizon 7 itself is self-managed, or what we call customer managed, uh, even though the VMware Cloud and AWS component is managed by VMware. So it's kind of a half that, if you will, but uh, it's really you know customer deploying and managing their own Horizon 7 infrastructure on a infrastructure as a, as a service, right, which is what we would call VMware Cloud and AWS. Now there is a DAS on VMware Cloud and AWS platform in the works, um, and you'll see that in our public roadmap uh, for VMware Cloud on AWS. Uh, but, but what we're talking about today, what's available today, is not that product. So just wanted to make that clear. All right, so let's move into the second benefit that I talked about, um, centralized management, right? And so, um, so today, with Horizon 7 uh, um, being deployed on-prem, there's a really great feature um, called CPA, or Cloud Pod Architecture. Um, now, this is a pretty mature feature. Um, it, I think it's been around for about five years. Um, don't let the name fool you. There's actually nothing cloud about it. I think it was more aspirational. Um, CPA, or Cloud Pod Architecture, uh, was designed to federate multiple Horizon um, instances, or Horizon pods, um, for multiple reasons, right? So one reason is um, each Horizon pod has a uh, upper limit in terms of max number of desktops um, it, can, it can house, and it's uh, 10,000 desktops. So we have a lot of very large customers that go over 10,000 desktops, but they still want some sort of centralized management, right? And so this is where can, they can put multiple pods and join them into a CPA, um, and then that is uh, one form of centralized or federated management. Um, the second use case is around uh, locality, right? So you may have multiple pods in different geos, and then you have a user that's going from one geo to another geo, let's say on business trip. Um, you don't want that uh, user to connect back to um, a desktop from very, very far away. So you can actually opt to give the user um, a desktop locally in the local Horizon um, pod. To do that, you would connect those pods together via CPA. Right? Um, and then the third use case is around DR. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about DR because I have a, um, uh, I'm going to talk a lot more about DR in an upcoming slide. But those are the three use cases that um, customers have traditionally used for uh, with CPA. And CPA essentially allows multiple pods to join together, to federate, to know about each other, right? So that's one form of centralized management. Um, the second form of centralized management, Horizon 7, is actually pretty new. Um, this is our Horizon Cloud control plane. Now, for those of you that know about Horizon Cloud, that's actually traditionally been our DAS product. Um, what we've done is that we're, we're joining Horizon 7 pods to the Horizon Cloud Control Plane. And once it's joined, Horizon Cloud Control Plane, which is actually incidentally deployed in AWS, running in AWS, is a cloud service that actually has visibility and a management capability across all of the pods that it actually manages, which also means Horizon 7. And so with that, um, what you can, what essentially you can um, do is use that Horizon Cloud Control Plane as that central point of management. Um, so let me show you what this, uh, a screenshot of what this looks like. So this is the dashboard for the Horizon Cloud Control Plane. And on this dashboard, um, the, um, you can see a map. And on this map uh, shows the global footprint and then the health of those global capacities, right? So here you see you have an on-prem Horizon 7 pod. Um, that's the one that's in, um, uh, in the U.S. And you can also see that there is a pod that you've set up uh, in Europe somewhere and see the little cloud symbol. Right? That's deployed in um, uh, uh, VMware Cloud on AWS. So, so here is a way to actually uh, give you that uh, single pane of management across both um, uh, all your capacities um, that are um, uh, showing up here. You can also look at your capacity utilization across your global capacity. You can look at your session utilization. And what I'm not showing here is that you can actually double click on these pods and actually dive in uh, to look at health, to look at the capacity, to look at the desktops that you have provisioned, right? And so this Horizon Cloud Console really is a um, that, that single point of uh, management. Um, now, it's an evolution. It doesn't have all the features we want it to have yet. Um, this is, by the way, in production already. Um, so over the next few releases, we're going to be building more and more, more and more features. Now, okay, so let's let's actually talk about um, the next benefit, which is um, disaster recovery, right? And as I've mentioned earlier, disaster recovery is a great use case for using CPA. Now, um, CPA is um, a way to link multiple pods together. And um, what CPA does really well is it transfers entitlement, right? So when you connect a user to uh, a bunch of Horizon pods that are connected together with CPA, 
the user can be given, driven by policy, uh, desktop in any of the pods in that CPA federation, right? And you can determine when and where to give that user the desktop. And so what's interesting there is that um, now think about for the DR use case where um, you can set the policy so that all your users are using the primary pod, right? During normal business operations. And then as soon as the um, primary pod goes down or you know, experiences an outage of some sort, um, any user who doesn't get a desktop on the primary pod can be automatically redirected to a DR pod, right? That's in the same CPA federation. So, so that's basically how CPA works um, for um, uh, you know, Horizon 7. Now, now, we haven't even started talking about Horizon 7 on VMware Cloud on AWS yet, but that's just how it works today with uh, Horizon 7 on-prem. Now, most customers, uh, most BDI customers, uh, really want DR, right? Um, you know, they want to protect their primary infrastructure, but DR is actually a very expensive um, uh, proposition, especially if you try to deploy DR on-prem, right? So what it means, you have to set up another DR, uh, you have to set up another data center, right? Kind of keep it semi-dark uh, for the um, you know few times uh, where your primary site goes down, either partially or completely. So while it's a really nice uh, to have thing, but it's just very expensive, and we don't see a lot of BDI customers um, deploying DR for their BDI, but they all want it. Um, okay, now enter um, you know VMware Cloud and AWS. VMware Cloud and AWS actually makes it really easy and really um, uh, inexpensive. Um, to be able to deploy um, uh, DR for your on-prem primary desktop. And, and the key reason there is the elasticity um, of uh, cloud deployment as well as the pay-as-you-go model. So this is what you would do, right? So again, you would use CPA and you would deploy a pilot light Horizon 7 deployment on VMware Cloud and AWS. And you kind of keep it, you would keep it there and maybe with a small pool of desktop. Um, and you connect the DR pod and the primary pod via CPA. Now, um, whenever the primary pod goes down, right, the, the users, the, 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 your, your users that have the highest priority can actually, they'll see like a, um, they'll get logged out automatically. And then they'll then um, log back in. When they log back in, they're automatically uh, redirected to a desktop on the DR pod. Okay. So, so that works really well. But what about all your other users, right? Because after all, you'll, you've, you've only maintained a small pool of desktops uh, on your pilot light deployment on VMware Cloud and AWS. This is where automated scaling comes in, and I'll show you how it works. But basically, you can set it so that Horizon 7 on VMware Cloud and AWS will automatically create additional desktops when you need it, when your users are starting to log in. And it does it very quickly. And it also creates the underlying um, uh, hosts that are needed to, to house those desktops. Um, and then you do have the option to use uh, file share service, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, what's uh, good with a DR desktop if you can't get the user data, right? So there's uh, lots of um, file share options um, on AWS um, that you can use, and then you can use and then uh, use the uh, replication technology to replicate your on-prem file share to your um, AWS file share. And so, um, so again, you know, just to uh, emphasize, the, the pay-as-you-go model of the um, uh, of this setup is actually what makes um, building DR on VMware Cloud and AWS cost effective. Now, one thing I, I will um, warn you is that, um, you know, cloud doesn't mean unlimited cap cap capacity, right? Um, so in, in any given AWS data center with VMware Cloud and AWS running, there's, you know, some spare capacity. Um, and so um, when you're building a DR capacity, you know, always make sure you work with capacity management of VMware. If you have a small deployment, there's usually enough capacity in the data center to kind of um, give you the DR capacity when you need it. But let's say you have 10,000 desktops, right? You want, or you want to go up to 10,000 desktops. Um, and that's probably not going to happen automatically, meaning that there's not going to be that many hosts there for you. So um, work with VMware capacity management to have a capacity plan uh, for your DR deployment. Okay, so let's talk about auto scaling. And I mentioned auto scaling as part of how you would be um, automatically scaling up for um, uh, in the event of DR. But this auto scaling actually works, I mean, it's a, it, it works for different use cases, right? So this works for what we're calling intraday use case as well. And so let me explain how it works with the intraday use case. And imagine a customer who has deployed Horizon 7 on VMware Cloud on AWS. And let's say they're, you know, um, they're a call center. 
and in this call center, you know, um, peak hours, right, uh, nine to five, uh, there's twice as many um, uh, operators that, that need to be staffed. Um, and then five o'clock rolls around and kind of people go home and then the second shift comes in and then they, you know, maintain a much smaller uh, staff. So what you would ideally want is to be able to scale up during the peak hours and then scale back down during the off-peak hours so that you're not paying for peak capacity, um, you know, 24 hours a day, right? And so you can do that with a combination of the instant clone dynamic port expansion capability and its integration with Elastic DRS. Um, so instant clones, um, by the way, instant clones, for those of you not familiar, instant clones are used to create additional virtual desktops. And it's just a very rapid creation uh, technology that also creates very thin um, virtual desktops. Um, so there's a lot of savings in terms of storage um, uh, costs that way. So during peak hours, um, so, so during off-peak hours, you have, you know, let's say, you know, um, 100 desktops running, right? Because you'd expect 100 reps to be using those desktops. And then eight, uh, nine o'clock hits, um, you can set it so that uh, at nine o'clock, um, instant clones will actually um, begin to create um, the uh, additional number of desktops. Or you can set it so that as more and more um, uh, workers come in and they log in and they start using up the available instant clones or available desktops, um, Horizon 7 will automatically generate more, um, uh, create more desktops. As more desktops are created, the existing hosts are essentially, you know, uh, become overutilized. And then Elastic DRS then will kick in, depending on the policy that you've previously set, can add additional hosts to cover demand. Elastic DRS has a couple of settings. Um, it'll allow you to, to set how many additional hosts you want to be created, you want um, VM, the VMware Cloud on AWS to create simultaneously within the same cluster, right? So you can either select one uh, or all the way up to four. When you select four hosts to be created simultaneously, the host, the cluster that you're in, can expand very, very rapidly, right? So this this um, configuration essentially uh, allows you to specify how fast you want the elastic demand to, to go up. Um, and then Instant Clone itself, uh, it actually is very, very quick. And so what we've also done with Instant Clone is uh, we've kind of throttled it, right? Because even though the hosts are created very quickly, 10 hosts, 10 minutes per host, and you can do four hosts at a time, Instant Clone may still at some time run ahead of um, uh, the EDRS creation. So in that case, we actually slow down Instant Clone to kind of match the speed of the host creation so that you don't end up in a, a situation where you have very, very hot hosts, right? And then your users can't use their desktop. And then once the five o'clock uh, comes around, right, and now you're kind of going to off peak hours, as your reps log out, and then there are now more and more unused Instant Clones or unused virtual desktops, then Horizon 7 will actually delete those um, desktops automatically. And then, um, then the remaining desktops, right now, they're kind of all occupying hosts that are underutilized. Then Elastic DRS will then come in, consolidate those desktops, and be motion them to kind of fewer desktops, and then turn off the spare host capacity. Right? So with this, you're really only paying for the hosts as you're using them. Once they get deleted, you're no longer paying for it. And you can do this, you know, uh, on a daily basis or a weekly basis, um, you can set you you it it, it it's um you know configured or it's rather uh, it follows how you're actually how your users are actually using this, the desktop. Now this workflow is not available just yet. We talked about it last year um, as it's coming, but this time it's really coming. It's coming actually in Q4 um, of of this year. And so this workflow is applicable both for the intraday use case I just described as well as the disaster recovery. Um, business continuity use case, right, that I talked about earlier. Okay, so to summarize the, the benefit of rapid scaling, it just allows you to very quickly respond to your business's needs, right? And then you pay for what you use. So not only are you more responsive, but you're also very efficient and not paying for peak capacity when no one's using it. Um, and then, you know, overall, I, I think, you know, VMware Cloud on AWS really just makes Horizon 7 workloads uh, that more elastic and that more extendable. So now I will pass this back to Andrew to conclude um, the webinar. Andrew? Awesome. Thanks, Angela. That's great. So key takeaways, um, same desktop image on-premise as within AWS. That's a key differentiator there. Seamless end user experience between on-premises and AWS. Um, uh, leverage the existing uh, investment with VMware 
um, when you're making your migration to the cloud. Uh, same tool sets, same skills, um, a lot of the same consoles, same, very familiar environment there. Um, as uh, Angela was just talking about, with rapidly scaling up and down the environment, uh, and that goes along with a, a pay-as-you-go model. Like that. So those are some of the key benefits there as takeaways. Uh, another thing to talk about is uh, there's a good bit of content uh, publicly available for this now as well. Um, so from a VMware Cloud on AWS perspective, there's a couple of links there. Uh, we have TCO tools. Uh, there's a roadmap uh, uh, site as well. Um, and all these links you'll be getting through the, uh, the, the thank you email at the very end. Um, we did get a couple of questions about this too, and, and we do have some information about uh, Citrix on VMware Cloud on AWS. Uh, as it stands today, Citrix has an intent to support um, their uh, virtual apps and desktops on AWS, uh, but that's not fully supported today. Um, either way, we have uh, a link to that blog article from Citrix, um, as, uh, uh, as well as uh, some more information from a Horizon perspective there too. Thanks, everyone.